Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today it is time for another 10 classic Amiga games by year. This is part two, 1987, and we're going to get straight into the countdown. Okay, so the first game I have here is King of Chicago by Cinemaware and Mirasoft. Um, this was a another one, another classic Cinemaware type game. It's graphically awesome as all Cinemaware games were at the time. It's not one I've played that much, to be honest with you, out of all of the Cinemaware games. This and the Sinbad games pretty much are the two that I haven't played that much. Um, and the Three Stooges, which we may come on to later. Um, let's have a look at the review anyway, so that can speak probably better about this game than I can. It says, Cinema we're going to have a healthy collection of releases for the Amiga, numbering amongst them Defender of the Crown and Sinbad. Indeed, our cover of this issue is dedicated to two more forthcoming releases previewed on page 15. The King of Chicago continues their homage to movie classics, focusing on the legends of the 30s gangster era. So yeah, that's basically what it's all about. I'm not going to read the whole review, obviously. Um, we'll see a few screenshots on the review here. This, I can't remember what magazine this is for. Oh, the Games Magazine. It's hard to get the more well-known Amiga magazines from there. They really didn't start up till the 90s. So it's quite hard to get decent reviews of games. It's got 80% in the games magazine which i must admit i don't remember much about from some of the magazines i used to collect but maybe you know a little bit more about it, it says here another snippet the action begins in 1931 ends in 30, 1934 the year leaders of organized crime held a meeting in new york to form a national syndicate but this was set up to centralize violence and remove it from the hands of the individual gangs chicago was considered too far back to join pinky thus has three years to establish a commanding position in chicago i guess we must have oh yeah pinky callahan is the character now let's read what they said about it Graphically, King of Chicago is excellent, combining gorgeously evocative still shots with detailed and appropriately grim characters. The only detraction is the contrast between the faces, which are all beautifully drawn, and suits, which are always simple, giving the impression of cardboard cutouts. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, the sound complements this general high standard to create a fully convincing 30s feel, and without exception, musical backing is superb. Usually in the Cinemaware games, you do get great graphics. Uh, also, the sound is brilliant too, so I could totally see that. The only serious gripe is the constant disc access. It does impinge significantly on the atmosphere if you only have one drive. If you have two, then despite the high price, the game's depth and playability make it highly recommended. 80%. And of course, we have access to two on the A500 Mini, so definitely is worth a moment of your time if you haven't played this game and you like the other Cinemaware games that are out there. You'll know exactly what you're getting. Okay, next up we have Earl Weaver Baseball. Now, I didn't have many baseball games growing up. I did have Hardball, which we'll come on to in a second because the review I've got actually compares Earl Weaver to Hardball. So that'll be interesting to take a little look at that. I know Hardball a lot better. But many people I know and uh, most of the magazines did think that Earl Weaver Baseball was better. And we'll have a look in a second on that one. I used to like TV Sports Baseball personally. Um, I think it was known by another name. I think it was Bo Jackson's Baseball in America. But that came out a lot later so obviously it's not relevant for this countdown but anyway we'll have a look at the review here it's baseball head-to-head -head, hardball versus earl weaver and um, hardball got six overall uh, we've got eight although hardball got better graphics and um, they rated the sound toughness endurance and value better for Earl weaver baseball um let's have a little look at some of the snippets on here uh, with the notable exception of american football few sports that originated in the us have ever really taken off in a big way over here in good old blighty basketball may get a few minutes on channel four but then so does everything else from tortoise racing to hedgehog splatting. <laughs> Interesting. Slightly different nowadays, isn't it? We get all the sports over here now, which is great. And the only sport that might possibly come as popular as American football with the British is baseball. And we did get, yeah, we got a few games back in the day. Not so much, um, obviously nothing like what we get now on all sorts of channels. But um, yeah, I used to watch a bit of baseball back in the day. I think it was more, for me, the most baseball I would ever be exposed to. But there would have been video games. Um, I, I don't know why I never played Earl Weaver, to be honest. I think I had Hardball and that was enough for me. I didn't really need another one. And then, like I said, years later, uh, TV Sports Baseball came out. It says here, I, although technically a comparison and took a few minutes to become clear that apart from sharing baseball as the common denominator, Hardball and Earl Weaver are completely different and therefore not comparable. So there you go. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> they do a head-to-head -head, and yet within 30 seconds they say they're not comparable. But that's the way it goes, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what baseball games you might have had growing up. Obviously, if there's a few American people here. I'm sure you had more interest in these. Like I said, in the UK, we were getting into it, you know, slowly but surely. But maybe it wasn't the thriving sport that it would have been, obviously, in the US. So let me know in the comments below if you had a, a Weaver. I think it was made by Electronic Arts, unless I'm very much mistaken. I'm trying to see if it says it in the review. I think it does say it in the review. Yeah, Electronic Arts, baseball games, different catches me altogether. Graphics in this game is not as good as Hardball. 
The men are not as well illustrated and the animation, although very smooth, is not quite as well executed. The sound, however, is noticeably better. Sampled throughout the game makes good use of the Amiga speech facilities as well as some excellently sampled phrases such as you are out if you fail to make a base or strike if should you fail to hit one of the demon computer pictures. Both games use the Amiga's features well. It's only a pity that they could not combine Harbaugh's graphics with Earl Weaver's sound, then you really would have a great game. I said at the beginning these two are not really comparable but after a week it was Earl Weaver that I returned to. Hardball was instantly appealing but in the long term Earl Weaver's added features make the game more stimulating. So there you go I guess if you want something long term look to Earl Weaver Baseball and you've probably already played it if you're into baseball. Um, if not then uh, if you only want like a few games yeah Hardball's still fun. I, I, I enjoy Hardball. I think I played more of it on the Commodore 64 though from what I can remember but obviously the Amiga is going to have slightly superior graphics. Well, that might be a controversial statement. There might be people that love the 64 saying, nope, that's not true, because <laughs> it looked good on there too. But anyway, overall, Earl Weaver Baseball, a very good game. Okay, next is a game I know and love very well. It's Fairy Tale Adventure by Micro Illusions. This, when I got my Commodore Amiga, um, I got the Batman pack um, and also got Fairy Tale Adventure. Um, they were the first few games I got. So it's Batman, uh, New Zealand Story, FA18 Interceptor, and yes, this, Fairy Tale Adventure, and it was great. I mean, I wasn't ever really one for kind of like a dungeon crawler, I guess you'd call them, an early one from back in the day. Um, I was about to say Dungeons and Dragons style, but I suppose it's not really. Yes, I suppose it's an early RPG sort of open world game and a lot of fun. Hard to actually read what it got overall. I think it's 81% looking at it. Sorry to zoom right into the review there. It's very, it's very blurry, this one. From Amiga Computing, uh, Micro Illusions is not well known in the UK except for what's become a classic Amiga role-playing game, Fairy Tale Adventure. The story is that of three sons of a small village's master at arms. Following a long period of peace and prosperity, the land is invaded by a necromancer and his hordes of evil minions. The village is repeatedly attacked until its magic talisman is stolen. Fearing the worst, the village elders ask the father to go to the king for help. For a long time, they hear nothing until one day he staggers back, wounded and dying. He confirms that the country, country is overrun by all that is evil. On his deathbed, he explains to his sons what must be done to save the lands from the necromancer's clutches. From a prophecy made in the distant past, it was said that all seven quests had to be completed to defeat such an enemy. You control one of the sons in his quest to fulfil that prophecy. So yes, you set out from your home village and basically you wander. You wander the land. Are you controlled by keyboard or mouse? I think I used to play on a mouse, don't remember playing much on the keyboard. So again, this is a game that's, if you've got to use both at any point, might be a bit trickier to play on the A500 Mini, obviously unless you've got your keyboard plugged in. But when, it come, when the Maxi comes out at the end of the year, uh, might be one that will be a lot more fun to play. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of trouble playing keyboard games, really. I, I plug an external keyboard in, so I'm not really that bothered. But just to let you know, if you haven't got one to hand, this might be a bit more of a tricky one to play for you. I think you can play it just on the mouse, personally, but don't quote me on that. Um, we start with Brother Julian. Um, I found it very difficult to keep him alive for very long. Each time he's killed, his luck points are reduced. If they've not reached zero, a sweet little blue fairy flies across the screen and resurrects him. Once Julian's finally dead, you move over to Philip, and then you move over to Kevin, finally. Uh, it's not easy. Yep, yeah, I can definitely testify to that. I have actually got a video on this channel, um, my childhood memories, and this is one of the videos that I've uh, got on there, a fairy tale adventure one. I think I played it for about 30, 40 minutes. So if you want to check that out, I'll try and remember to leave a link on this video. If not, you can find it obviously on my channel. But it's a lot of fun. If you like sort of open world-ish, a uh, bit of sort of like RPG fantasy elements, you know, monsters. I know there's skeletons and stuff like that. There's ghost looking things that come after you. They're pretty scary, actually. Uh, so it's good. It's really good fun. You can see the review it got here. Uh, Storylines, fancy in the D&D tradition, I think that's 6 out of 10. Aura, difficult to get started, which takes the shine off the final product, 6 out of 10 again. Staying power, okay once, you've lear once you learn the ropes, uh, 8 out of 10. Gameplay, mouse and keyboard control takes a little time to adjust to, so maybe it is both. Um, I can't remember now, it's been a while since I played it, I did that video about 4 years ago I think. 8 out of 10. Value, many hours needed to get anywhere, that is true. But again, with safe states and stuff, you know, no excuse really. And difficulty, easy to lose your way, but 9 out of 10. So it sounds like quite a negative thing, doesn't it? 81% overall, a classic. Um, if you've never played Fairy Tale Adventure and you're into this sort of thing, give it a go. Trust me, you will not regret it. It is a fantastic game. Okay, next up we have Police Quest in Pursuit of the Death Angel, and it's from Sierra and they did it's one of their series of adventures style games uh, which they uh, did quite a few of back in the day 
uh, Space Quest, King's Quest, which were very popular games and uh, quite a few police quests as well, as well as like they were responsible for the Leisure Suit Larry series and a lot of fun. This game's great. You're a police officer basically doing a shift and I, I won't tell you any more than that because you know you don't want me to get spoiled, but it's great fun. You kind of go on patrol in your car driving around the town. It's It was brilliant. I, I, I loved it uh, back then. It was so such fun. For the time, I loved the graphics. I thought they were amazing. Obviously, you know, like most games, they don't look as great now. But still, I think this is a game you could play quite easily today and have a lot of fun. This is a review from the Games Magazine again, where overall it scored 92%, 89 atmosphere, 93% interaction, and overall 92%. Let's have a little look here. It's up to the player to prove he's good enough cop to go undercover, weed out Death Angel's gang, bring the racketeer to justice. Make one mistake, lose a suspect, or make an arrest that won't hold up in court and your chance to get this master criminal will be lost forever. So we've got On Patrol, put humour is everywhere in Police Quest, it hits my funny bone right on the chuckle button. As with Space Quest 2, I had trouble typing commands in my fits of laughter. But there's a real adventure too, Police Quest includes more than 100 city streets to explore using the patrol car. The idea is to drive to various locations in the map and each one walk from screen to the screen. The car can also be used for high speed pursuits. Sierra Adventures based towards graphics rather than text descriptions and most of Police Quest display is the action window. The player is a little figure who walks around on many screens interacting realistically with people and objects. Control of the main character is via keyboard, joystick or mouse and speed can be altered at any time. The car is a little tricky to control at first and the sound lets the game down slightly. Police Quest is a large adventure with more than one solution and should keep even hardened text only adventure players amused and involved for quite some time. That's, that's what I loved about it back then it's like you know you've got more than one solution to this game which is amazing when you think about it you know all this coming on little floppy disks you know and yet there's enough adventure out there you know you've got a hundred streets to patrol it's awesome and it was an early introduction to what it's like you know to be a police officer which is like it was so it, it blew my mind back then i can't imagine there's many people out there that haven't played police quest to be honest with you but if you haven't you should definitely do it um it's definitely a fun game and uh, yeah, absolutely worthy of you spending weeks and weeks on, to be honest with you. It's that good. Okay, next we have Arkanoid, and I can't imagine there's many people out there that have not played a version of Arkanoid in their life, be it in the arcade or on most of the home computers. Um, I believe I had it uh, ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, and Amiga, and also I played a lot of it in the arcades myself, so I definitely have played a lot of Arkanoid. If you've never played it, you control like a little bat looking thing down the bottom of the screen, and uh, a ball will be flying around, destroying the blocks. And obviously you've just got to, it's almost like Pong in a sense. You know, you've got to keep batting the ball back. Um, you might get some power ups on the screen as well, which you can try and hit. And you're going to get obstacles that are going to get in your way. And obviously the object of the each level is to destroy all the bricks. Um, that's basically it. <laughs> There's no point in going any further than that really. It's a simple premise. But it's just a very addictive game. Uh, let's have a look at this magazine review. Uh, I'm not quite sure which one it's from, to be honest with you. Uh, but they gave it 7 out of 10. So, I mean, we're not well beaten. But, you know, it's a simple game, isn't it, at the end of the day, Arkanoid? It's just quite addictive once you get into it. Okay, let's read the first few lines of this. It says, Bounce hungry arcade enthusiasts will have been drumming their keyboards restlessly at the complete lack of any decent breakout style game on the Amiga. Clones have appeared for it all without exception, pretty shabby copies of the original. If you remember Breakout, from way back when, you'll know what that's talking about. Now you have your chance to see this imported version of the coin up which revived it all in the first place, but at a price. Strikes me as wholly unnecessary to describe the plot. Yeah, exactly what I was thinking. Capsule warped in time somewhere a bit. All the gameplay, knock bricks out. To anyone reading this, the game has appeared on just about every format and every conceivable shape since it was released just over a year ago. They're pretty much reinforcing everything I said, aren't they, in this review? <laughs> it's like, if you don't really know what Arkanoid or Breakout or one of those games is all about, then you've got no chance, have you, really? I think this must be from Commodore user, actually, because it looks like it says CU rating. It's funny, actually, as well, looking at this review, they've got a glaring... Um, typo in this review <laughs> they said it's by um, discovery software if you look at it but it's actually by discovery software so they've uh, completely messed that one up on the review there which is quite funny when you think about it isn't it uh, but it says here what you have with discovery's job on arc is as good a version as you could ever expect to have on a home computer any criticisms are only really nitpicking the one thing you don't have is an affordable price 
Yeah, $49 apparently, so what would that have been? Probably around about £40. That's pricey for a game back then. I think most of the games we've looked at so far were around about the £25 mark. So £40 is a lot, really. I mean, that's... Yeah, I, I don't think I'd pay that, personally. But um, you have to have money to burn or buy it. An obscene amount of money. It's also not easy to come by. Hmm, that's... Strange, isn't it, really? But we don't have to worry about that these days, do we? I mean, you either have it on your Commodore Amiga original to play it on, or you play it on emulation or whatever way around you want to play it. You know, you don't really have to go out and buy it in a shop anymore. So I guess that's not really a, that's a, like a problem from way back then, isn't it? It's not really anything that exists for us. And uh, as a game itself, you know, if you've never played Arkanoid before, where have you been? But you definitely should play it because it's a lot of fun. And I don't think it's anything that you're going to spend hours and hours of your life on. But definitely, unless you want to complete it and you're having troubles, obviously. But definitely one of those games you could just pick up and and have 20 minutes on and, and have a blast. You know what I mean? It's it's that type of game, I would say, personally. And uh, yeah, a lot of fun. If you've never played it, like I said, give it a go. Okay, next up we have a game called Firepower, another Micro Illusions game. That's um, that's funny that, because it, it says on the Fairy Tale Review that they didn't do many games, or they weren't very well known in this country, but this is the second game from these people. Now this is a game I have to confess I have never played. Um, this was recommended to me by a friend of mine, um, who said that it was one of their favourite games. And you know, I thought, well, I'll listen to that advice and I'll put it on my list. Because I'm not above doing that, you know. And looking at it, it does look like it might be my kind of game. They did say to me that it's the kind of game they used to play with their uh, other all the time so they said single player not so good two players an absolute blast so bear that in mind if you are a solo player this is one of those games i think that is better served as multiplayer but like i said i can't say that from personal experience uh, this was a recommendation by one of my mates and uh, they said it definitely belongs on the list so there we go let me know in the comments if you've played it if you agree with that decision <laughs> otherwise it's nothing to do with me well i guess it is i've put it on the list haven't i but there you go so here we go it says firepower puts you in the driving seat of a tank traversing a huge desert blowing away anything unfortunate enough to get in your way with the aim of capturing the enemy's flag now this is from commodore user by the way as well this review the desert is spanned by a network of roads which is used to get from location to location you can drive over the desert but this slows the tank down it won't be long though before you come across hostile gun emplacements which are easily identifiable as they are a different color from your own fortunately you have weaponry to, to dispose of them and after a few hits from your missiles they'll explode in the sound of a sampled boom leaving just a smoldering pile of rubble uh, let's skip on the, the review a little bit it's in the two player mode however that this game comes into its own. Packaging blurb makes a big thing out of player versus player mode and quite rightly so. Display is split into two independently scrolling screens, one for each player and there's a real sense of competition as you and a friend attempt to blow away as much of each other's territory as possible in your quest to capture the opposition's flag. What a laugh. Firepower features some attractively designed and well animated graphics though the scrolling is a little jerky when you get up to high speed and plenty of explosions. The action can prove a little too tedious on your own but this minor quibble shouldn't put you off indulging this enjoyable and well executed game got seven for video six for audio seven for toughness and endurance and i think that's value for money it looks like vpm on here but it must be vfm uh, eight out of ten so yeah i mean obviously recording this video i had to record single player footage because obviously i'm on my own so <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't play it against anybody but um you'll get the idea from that what it looks like and uh, let me know in the comments like i said if you've played this in two player mode i would be really interested to see because i could see how this would be a fun game to play with a second person so i haven't had that experience yet but um i'm hoping to at some point uh, my brother and my dad are both into like commodore amiga and my dad bought us our first Amiga back in the day so I'm pretty sure that um, I might get a game with them once I go up there if I take my little mini Amiga with me and there's no reason why I shouldn't to be honest with you as it's a great bit of kit and it's easily portable as well which is amazing that's what I love about it so uh, yeah let me know if you've played it and uh, I had a go on single player and it was fun so uh, yeah if you haven't got a second person to play it with then uh, there's still no reason not to give it a go okay i like to include different styles of games on here and this one we have road war 2000 and it's from strategic simulations i believe yes incorporated um obviously a strategy game from back in the day i didn't play a lot of strategy games growing up i've played a lot more since um because i think it's the sort of thing you do play when you get slightly older <laughs> you know i don't, don't want to typecast the game but you know, when you're younger, you just want to run around shooting things, don't you really? Or <laughs> scoring a goal in football or something. Strategy games pretty much niche when it comes to being a kid. But when you get older and you appreciate gaming a little bit more, I think that's when you kind of settle into a bit of strategy from now and again. I may be stereotyping there. Maybe I'm out of order, but <laughs> who knows? But I did not play much of this as a kid, let's put it that way. I've played some si uh, since though, and it's a lot of fun. Let's read the beginning of the review. It was hard to find a decent review for this one, but we've got an Amiga User International review. Uh, they gave it... 
actually there's not an overall view there seven for graphics five for sound seven for playability six for value so it's not the best review i think it's obviously equates to about seven out of ten on an average uh, the great plague that struck down most of the usa in the year 1999 <laughs> oh wow so that was futuristic back then uh, left the country's defense systems wide open to nuclear attack as a result strategic cities across the u.s have suffered nuclear strikes and much of the population is dying either from radiation or the plague oh that's chirpy I'm glad I didn't play this when I was a kid now then. Uh, in such a situation, anarchy and inevitably violence begins to reign, and in many of the cities, violent gangs have taken over. Armed with an assortment of weapons and equipped with transport and supplies, these gangs have taken to the roads in an unprecedented outbreak of civil war in nuclear crippled and disease rife country. <laughs> Sounds so chirpy this game, doesn't it? In this latest strategy game from Strategic Simulations Incorporated, you take the role of the leader of one such gang. Your prime objective is to stay alive. And the game's played out over an on-screen map in which the position of your vehicle is marked. The first vehicle I was given did not stand out too clearly against the roads. Too similar in colour and I was straining my eyes a little bit to see where it was. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. That, that would be definitely a criticism that I would have had. Maybe it's a bit different nowadays because we can play it on uh, better televisions um, than the CRT TVs or monitors we used to have from back then. So I think maybe it might be slightly easier to play now uh, with the 720p. But yeah, I, I didn't. I played it on a, a computer probably for quite a few years ago on a emulation, and uh, you know I had a lot of trouble to be honest with you. Excuse me, my voice is going slightly. Incidents and events are shown as text or statistical outputs with full tactical combat is displayed on a separate screen. And we'll skip ahead slightly on review. Uh, in such a short review as this, I've only managed to skim the surface of the gameplay in Road War 2000. Graphically, the game is quite good. The map is well presented, although movement is jerky, sound is minimal. As of all these types of games, it's the depth of gameplay that's prime importance. And this one certainly has a lot to it. A variety of vehicles, inhabitants, terrain, and combat options combined with a futuristic and anarchic nuclear plus plague scenario. Man, that's a lot to get your mouth around. <laughs> Definitely make Road War 2000 one of the more absorbing strategy games. Highly recommended. So they didn't give it a great score considering they highly recommend it. But yeah, if you're into strategy games, again, I would highly recommend this too. And just think about it, you know, 1987, it was the infancy really of Amiga wasn't it you know there's not that many games out at this point so I can imagine this being one of the better ones of its time and uh, definitely if you like strategy games uh, have a look at this one because I think you'll enjoy it okay next is a game that probably doesn't need many introductions to Amiga gamers it's Star Glider by Rainbird um, an absolute blast of a space game uh, along the sort of same lines as something like an Elite or um, Star Glider 2 funnily enough which <laughs> which improved on the original in almost all aspects. But Star Glider, the original one, is still very much worth playing. And from 1987, uh, an absolute beast of a game. Um, I only got seven in this review, but I remember playing a lot of this way back when, and it was a lot of fun. I'm sure lots of you have played this too. It's, a, it's quite a revered game. Well, certainly the second one is more revered, but um, we'll come on to that maybe in a later video. Who knows? Um, but for now, we're in 1987, and that's when the original was released. Let's have a little look at the review. I'm not 100% sure what magazine this is from. We should start. I think it's a Commodore user again. Looking at the name of the review, I think it's the same. We did a, did a couple of these reviews. Um, it's a bit blurry, so forgive me if I make a few mistakes when I'm reading from it. It says, like most Rainbow Games, Star Glider comes complete with an excellent novella. In this case, written by James Follett, an author of some note. Surprisingly, however, this game relies heavily on the novella's storyline. Anyone who has read it will fare a great deal better than those who simply jump in with guns blazing. Well, I didn't read it, so <laughs> and I liked the game, so take that as you will. I guess if you're playing it on like the mini at the moment, you're not going to have access to that novella, novella anyway unless you download it. So um, maybe, yeah, maybe I might have to do that at some point just to see how it compares, like knowing the story like that. But I mean, I just flew around and blew things up <laughs> as you do, I guess. So, uh, but yeah, maybe, maybe if you can track a copy of that down, it might be worth it. The object for all this fiction is simply to travel around an imaginary planet. In this case, Novenia, I think that says. They're killing as many alien life forms as possible. To help you achieve this, you have been equipped with a highly potent AGAV, airborne ground attack vehicle, a never ending supply of laser power and missile. As Jasan, I think that says, the daredevil pilot whose body you take control of, you must make the most of your weapons in order to gain as many points as possible. Each alien has different value ranging from 50 for the small drone to 7,500 for a star glider. Each time you accrue 10,000 points, you are transferred to a new, more complicated level. Star glider 
Strider takes the realms of Amiga games another giant step forward. Using sample sounds and true sequencing, Star Glider is one of the first games to produce a soundtrack of which the machine is capable. After a few hours of play, basics become more obvious you can spend more time learning the ins and outs of wreaking havoc on the likes of Fleet Commander Herman Crude. <laughs> I think that's what that says. Pilot of Star Glider 1, the ultimate baddie. To kill a Star Glider is not only necessary to be able to fly like a demon, you must also use your missiles to their best effect. Once missile is launched, your mouse controls only the missile, and you must therefore focus all your energies on pinpointing the adversary. Yeah, that, that's great fun. It's great fun, this game. Definitely, if you've never played it, you've got to check it out. I can't imagine there's many people that haven't, though. Um, it, it was definitely one of the more well-known games on this list. Uh, once in a silo, your AGAV has its shields and energy replaced, an extra missile can be taken on board unless you already have two. At this point you can also interrogate the silo computer which will give you valuable tips on killing enemy ships. Star Glider is a game unlike most current Amiga games will be remembered in four years time. Okay, why would it say that it only be remembered in four years time? <laughs> it's a very very specific sort of time frame isn't it? I can speak this, I can go back to this reviewer now and say I'm from the future and I can boldly predict that this game will be talked about long after four years, trust me. In fact, maybe it'll be re uh, talked about on a video in 2024, so there you go. It's a strange way to end a review that, but I think what he's basically saying is it's a good game. And I can endorse that too, it's a very good game and definitely one that's worthy of a place on this list. Okay, next up is a game that I'm sure most people are going to know all about. Don't really need me to tell you. Uh, it's Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lange Lizards. Now, this is the first Leisure Suit Larry game that came out. And uh, yeah, I think there's not going to be many people that don't know about this game. This always used to be the game that I, I guess when you played it when you were slightly younger, you you know, you thought you were getting away with murder. Do you know what I mean? Because I think it probably did come with an age rating. I'm pretty sure. I don't 100% remember if it did, but I'm pretty sure it did, <laughs> knowing some of the content as I do in this game. Let's read a bit of the review. I think, again, this may be a Commodore user review. It says, authors of the very playable King's Quest series, Al, Lowe, and Mark Crow, rhyming names, good, have once again joined forces to produce another 3D animated adventure for your delight and del delication. Leisure Suit Larry and the Lounge of the Lounge Lizards, Lounge Lizards. Oh my God. I knew I was going to struggle with that name when I said it right the first time but I knew I wasn't going to get it right every time um, it's the latest offering from Sierra Online Inc Larry's a jerk the wrong side of 40 and he's realised life is passing him by the final walk on a wild side is what he needs before it's too late well, I think we've all been there I mean I turned 50 in December so <laughs> I feel like I'm definitely on the down slope now his existence to date has hardly been a flurry of excitement living with his mother until the age of 38 when she threw him out he led a very sheltered life which in this context may be read as still a virgin <laughs> there you go but under your guidance he's one night to overcome his jerkisms and lose his virginity this suit Larry contains some explicit scenes and language and therefore is unsuitable for players under the age of 18. So there you go, there was an age rating on it. I'm thinking 1987, I would have been turning 14 that year. I'm not going to turn around and say that I definitely played this in 1987, but pretty close to that mark. So, you know, it was kind of at the age where I knew most of the what most of the things were in it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, you're not, you're not a kid anymore, but maybe you're probably not completely of age but um yeah i think there's probably a lot of us that played this game before we shouldn't have done back then but it was a laugh it was a laugh one of those games i think that you enjoy playing with your mates just because obviously you know you could chuckle at some of the things you had to do and that sort of thing now you begin your quest outside lefty's bar armed with a watch money breath spray dressed in the highest quality 100 percent man-made permanent press suit <laughs> There's one way to describe it. Control of Larry's movements as he jerks his way around the screens is via keyboard, joystick or mouse, with actions such as examine and talk to carried out using text import. So basically it's like, yeah, your general adventures, the, that sort of thing. The parser is more than adequate to deal with almost anything logical you may wish to input. Uh, the graphics themselves are fairly blocky, although colourful and often amusing. Sound is basic to such an extent I wonder why they bothered at all. <laughs> and game speed can be a little slow accessing the disc. The quest to lose Larry's virginity without catching anything unspeakable is an entertaining one, wholeheartedly sexist, but nonetheless a jolly good romp. Can I say that? Question mark. Yes, definitely. I would advise, you know, if you're going to play some Amiga games with your mates, a couple of beers, whatever, this is a good game to put on. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> a game that I probably should have played a little bit later in my life than I actually did, but one I definitely remember enjoying playing. Let me know in the comments if you played this one um, and sort of what age you were when you played it. And uh, if you were too young, did you understand it? <laughs> I think I understood most of what was going on, but yeah, there were a few things maybe I was a bit fuzzy on because I should have played it probably when I was a bit older. 
Okay, and our final game on the list is The Three Stooges by Cinemaware. I did mention it earlier uh, when I was doing the first game, King of Chicago, that it may crop up later. Well, here it is. Uh, this is another Cinemaware game that I didn't play a lot of at the time. I have played it since and had a bit of a laugh with it. I must admit, I didn't know much about The Three Stooges. I mean, it wasn't something that we got in this country uh, so probably more aimed at the american audience this one but still i i mean i love everything cinema wear i still think it's definitely a game worth playing uh, this always reminds me of lethal weapon 3 uh, when renee russo's character has got this game on her computer and obviously riggs loves the three stooges i always remember back in the day thinking i don't know that game I, i'd never i'd never heard of it when i saw lethal weapon 3 for the first time but here we go this review is from your amiga from august september 1988 so that's when they put the review up but I can assure you the game came out in 1987 the main street consists of 180 squares and the boys can move up to 6 squares on each turn the street is one way so there is no turning back once a square has been passed rather than rolling dice to move Stooges at least have some measure of control over their destiny and destination at the beginning of each turn the next 6 locations on the street are displayed as icons at the top of the screen hand randomly points to each of the locations and you can press the fire button to stop it where you want that is at least the theory in practice things are not quite as simple to start with you only only get a couple of seconds to study the icons before the hand starts to move. There's also a time limit that you must choose your square in, otherwise you end up moving to wherever the hand stops, be it beneficial or harmful. Finally, although it is fairly easy to choose a location you want to start early in the game, the rate which the hand moves across the square speeds up dramatically in the latter stages of the game, making it selection something of a lottery. However, it is also possible to slow down the hand, see later. Well, obviously we won't see it, but if you want to pause and look at the review, be my guest, because this would be a heck of a long video if I read every word of the reviews. So basically you play out a bunch of like mini games um, in this. That's basically what it's made up of. But obviously they're fun, entertaining mini games with Three Stooges humour. Um, if that's your bag, then uh, you're going to have a lot of fun out of it. I think even if it's not, you can still have a good laugh playing this game. I Don't, don't ask me to explain the ratings at the end of this review, by the way, because I have not got a clue. I don't know what that review system is <laughs> at the bottom there. <laughs> Like a three quarters of a pie chart and graphics 21, sound 23. I don't know what all that correlates to, to be honest. So there you go, to each their own. But I think it got around about seven out of 10 from what I remember um, seeing on them on the media. So there you go. It says the graphics in the Free Stooges are an excellent mix of cartoon animation, digitized pictures that make you sit up and take notice. Sound effects and tunes are superb and cinema wear have also obtained the rights to use Curly, Larry and Moe's actual voices. So fans can delight at the genuine sounds. I'm not even doing impressions of those. If you examine the individual parts of Three Stooges, then there's little, there's little to get excited about. None of the arcade games will stand up on their own. But that's not the point. Cinema where titles are better described as entertainment rather than games, pure and simple. Indeed, that is their whole underlying philosophy. So there you go. Yeah, basically, yeah, there's not one mini game on here that would make a whole game necessarily, but it's a sum of all those parts. And if you play it against people, that makes it entertaining. So if yeah, that's something that you're into and you're, you're into the Three Stooges in any way, or you want to check out the game that's in Lethal Weapon 3, <laughs> then give it a whirl. It's definitely a good, good looking game and a good fun game to play. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and tune in next time for part three, 1988. For now, I bid you farewell. And uh, if you check out any of these games that have been recommended in this list, let me know what you think. And let me know if there's any games that you would have put in, of course. There's some of these games, some of these lists coming up are going to be impossible for me because I tell you what, <laughs> there's so many games. I think I did 1989's list and 1988's. And I could have had about 50 games in there. So whittling it down to 10, there's always going to be games that you feel should be on there that aren't. So let me know and uh, I'll try and address them maybe in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you on the next video. Bye for now.